Different types of land cover have different effects on the movement of water in the hydrologic cycle. For example, vegetation like trees, grass, plants, and crops can slow the flow of water and allow part of it to infiltrate or seep into the soil. Examples of impervious surfaces include pavement, roads, and parking lots, which allow rainfall to move much more quickly. Rainfall is often collected in storm drains once it runs off the surface. Commercial, industrial, and residential land is developed by humans and dictates the drainage and movement of water around developed and populated areas. Unfortunately, land development usually comes at the expense of the natural environment, which can lead to pollution, storm surges, and other drainage issues. 2005's Hurricane Katrina, which until this year's Hurricane Harvey was the U.S. most expensive natural disaster and among its deadliest, is a prime example of how overdevelopment and lack of foresight in storm surge planning inhibits infiltration, storm surge abatement, and other means of runoff defense. These maps show, how the over, they show the overlap between pipeline development, land loss, and disaster areas during Hurricane Katrina. Runoff can be described as the part of the water cycle that flows over land as surface water instead of being absorbed into groundwater or evaporating. Runoff is that part of the precipitation, snow melt, or irrigation water that appears in uncontrolled surface streams, rivers, drains, or sewers. The less the water can infiltrate the soil, the more runoff will occur. As we can see, infiltration and runoff are directly connected and the more infiltration a surface provides, the less runoff the surface will have. For example, with natural ground cover such as vegetation and agriculture, runoff is as low as 10% of the rainfall. However, in a more urbanized area, it can go up to 55% of the total rainfall. Urban flooding is caused by a lack of drainage in an urban area. Because there's little soil available for storage or infiltration, most of the precipitation needs to be transported by way of surface runoff or the sewer system. High intensity rainfall can cause flooding when the city sewer system and draining canals do not have the necessary capacity to handle the amounts of rain they are falling. As seen in the graph, other major natural disasters stay fairly constant in occurrence, but hydrological and storm events have been constantly increasing because of urbanization. Here you can see the scale of overdevelopment that has occurred in Houston over the past 30 years. Within this time period, Houston lost approximately 70% of its wetlands. Houston received over 40 inches of rain within a short period of time due to Hurricane Harvey. These images show that that amount of water did not have many places to drain. What can engineers do to tackle this problem? Lots. Hydrologists and stormwater engineers can design infrastructure like pervious pavement to maximize infiltration and reduce runoff, commit to using green infrastructure, develop strong development regulations, and use stormwater structures such as swales, basins, and berms. This is a picture of the winning entry for the Sustainable Stormwater Design Competition in New York City after Hurricane Sandy. The project Bridging Berm won a $335 million grant to absorb storm surge to protect New York City's Lower East Side. 